Bertie, good yes. to meet you. Okay. Come and have a seat over, over here. Okay, so these are the, the students and uh, they're going to be pretty silent today and you can ignore them as best you can. Okay, hello students. <laughs> right, so uh, you haven't had any sessions before? No. Great. Have you got any um, aches, pains, any reasons why you might want to have an Alexander session? Yes, um, so I have ankylizing spondylitis. Um, my back is still reasonably flexible. Yes. Um, I also have had sort of ongoing problems with a lower disc, which sort of bulged from when I was about 20. Mm -hmm. um, and I, when I was about 20, dislocated my shoulder and had an operation to sort of put it back in. Yes. All of which has sort of made my back a somewhat of an interesting um, area. Um, Does it cause trouble today? Uh, not, not today. Um, but yeah, no, you know, it's achy um, and um, overnight, particularly right. with the arthritis. Mm. And do you wake up with it as well? Sometimes, yeah. Mm. So right now, this moment, is there any discomfort? Uh, no, not really. Okay. A little bit tight here, but apart from that. That's the usual place of tightness, is it? Uh, that's one of the places, yes. Okay. Any other health conditions no, that might be relevant? Good. And what do you know about the technique? Uh, nothing. Have you read about it at all? No, I haven't read about it. Um, Even better. I have heard, I've, heard, I've known about it for a long time. Um, yes. And people used to, at school, someone used to go for an you know, Alexander technique, but yeah. um, apart from that, no. So I have no... And I, I sort of consciously didn't actually when Jill asked. Great. All right, so that's a great opportunity for us. So thanks for volunteering. So what's going to happen today is I'm going to work with you. Um, I'm the one in a way that's on show, uh, not you. I can make mistakes, uh, not you. And uh, really it's for the students to learn how I would present a first session to someone that hasn't had any experience before. Mm -hmm. So there's no onus on you at all to perform, to do anything right to uh, get anything in any way different to what, what's going on. Okay, so what we'll, what we'll do, we'll start with simple movements of standing and sitting, mm -hmm. and then we'll probably have time for some table work towards the end. The whole session will be about um, 30, 40 minutes or so. And always feel free to ask questions. If there's something that pops in or if there's an interesting sensation or something's uncomfortable, uh, let me know while, while, while it's happening and we can address it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can start standing Okay. and you'll stand in front of this stool and look out towards the window. And what we'll do is we'll start you, actually we'll have you a little bit looking that way, okay. and put your feet a little bit wider apart. So the first things I, I do are very simple movements. I might move your neck, your head, I might move a shoulder, I might move an arm. And at the moment, your job is to do nothing at all, but just to let me move you. Mm -hmm. That's it, I've got you here and don't help me. And I'm moving your head all the way over to the left. Yes. And now I'm going to move you forwards and stop. Yep, and now I'm going to move you over your heels and still do absolutely nothing until I ask you to do something. So there's something I'm going to ask you to do right now is to stand up, including your heels. That's right, and then take the hips back and bend the knees all the way to the stool. And stop there and wait, and then stand up. And then bend the knees. That's it, hips back and bend the knees again and sit in the chair and stop there for a while. And then I'll take you forwards and stop. And then stand up with the heels. And sit and hips back and bend the knees. All the way, hips back and bend the knees. All the way. And stop. And hips back and bend the knees. 
that's it and then stand up with the heels yes and bend the knees all the way yeah and stop there if your legs get tired let me know and I'll take you here I'll move you here and stop and back and back and that's it that's great and do absolutely nothing now leave the head to go somewhere else and now stand up with your heels as well exactly that all the way to the chair again and then stop at the stool that's it stand up again and bend the knees again and heels and then bend the knees yes and heels and bend the knees again and then heels and bend the knees again and heels and then bend the knees again how are your legs coping okay and bend the knees again heels yep and leave the arms to fall and let them fall and stop and bend the knees in other words what does the movement feel like for you does it feel a bit strange or is it normal is it and bend the knees and um, I know it's a bit bizarre coming in and out of a chair 30 yeah. times on the trot. Yeah, I mean, but it feels like a yeah, different... Yeah, I don't know, quite, there's a... What does standing up normally feel like? A bit of a sort of lurch? And is it... Or is this, it feels like a sort of smoother... Right, so it's smoother, not so jerky, yes. Yeah, so that's one indication that something's different. It's a smoother quality rather than a, a jerky, jumpy quality. That's right. There's no, uh, that's a great way of describing it. There's no need to overcome inertia with a, a, a snatch. Mm. Yeah. What condition do you reckon the brain is in at that moment of jump or snatch compared to when you're not snatching like now? What, um. What's different in your mind? What? Probably, well, when you're snatching, you're going to be focused on a very particular, it draws your attention to a particular part of your body where you're going to be exerting pressure. Yes, yes, you would, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me take you backwards. And then wait there for a while. And then stop, and then stand up with the heels. And then bend the knees. So there's something about not needing to overcome inertia right now that still lifts you out of the stool. Mm. And of course, you know, I'm not lifting you. And then stand up again and bend the knees. So what quality of attention have you got when you're not pushing and jumping? Stand up with the heels. It's well, not the, 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 there's a sort of uh, smooth, sort of plane-like quality to, to the attention. Yeah. I Mm. Smooth quality of attention, yes. Yeah. yeah, so the quality of attention, the quality of your nervous system is a bit different when there's a, a jump and whether there's just yeah. this, this movement. Yeah. Mm. And hips back and bend the knees all the way mm -hmm. and stop. Yes, and wait there for a while and then heels and bend the knees heels that's it and bend the knees what's the quality like right now heels and bend the knees um. heels knees and heels and knees again heels and bend the knees again or I could ask you another question, what's going on in the neck and back area as you sit and stand with your legs? The neck and the, particularly the back feels um, quite still. Still, yep, yeah. um, okay, remember that word, so that's still back. Of course that includes the neck, because the neck is the back. Mm. In other words, it's not, you're not putting too much noise into it, are you? No. And heels, so normally when you jump, or snatch at something, you'd be putting a lot more something into the back rather than still. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. There'll be a lot more something, yeah. effort or stress. Yeah. And the back is an indication of whether you're stressed or not. 
So if the back is quiet, still, as you put it, it's, it tells me something about the condition of your brain as well, mm -hmm. that your brain is also staying quite quiet and still, mm -hmm. rather than stressed or mm -hmm. reactive. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're just using sitting and standing as a, as a vehicle to learn how to be a bit different in the mind and body, mm -hmm. a bit more still rather than snatchy and effortful. Mm -hmm. Hips back and bend the knees. And stop and then heels. And bend the knees. And then heels. And then bend the knees. And heels. And bend the knees. And heels. Anything else about this sort of experience of, of moving and being? Um, I, I think what I find is that because of where you're sort of putting the sort of my body, yeah. that my attention is there. And bend the knees. Um, yes, bend the knees. Rather than in your eyes. So I, I mean, I suppose there's a sort of there's a sense of being fully embodied rather than mind being out there. Yes, so not on the future as in got to stand, snatching into the future, but in sort of embodied into being just being here. Yeah. Bend the knees and then heels and then bend the knees and then heels and bend the knees again and heels and hold it there. So the chair really is just a prop for exploring different ways of being. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you play a musical instrument or sport or just walking down the street or sitting quietly. But what we are exploring is a certain quality of mind and body that is pervasive in those, in those events. That's it, do nothing here, let the arms fall. Any questions popping in? No. no, no. Okay, let go again. Mm -hmm. That's fine, let me move your head a bit further. Mm -hmm. Again, hips back and bend the knees and stop at the stool. Okay, so now you're just sitting, not very much is happening. What's it like to sit in this condition compared to the, say, maybe the, the normal way you'd sit? Um, it feels quite nicely centred without having to um, sort of shift. Nicely centred without having to shift, as in not, you, need, you don't need to get comfortable. So in the way that when I would normally stand, there is some need to overcome something. Yes. Normally when I'm sitting, I think there's an element of having to resist a sort of an imbalance, a movement, or a, or a propensity to be in a particular way. So whether that's a sag, to say, so maybe yes. like to yes. start doing that, yes. there needs to be a sort of a concomitant to sort of movement away uh, from that. To stop yourself doing so it. Yes. So what that felt like was a nice place to, so, I mean, it would have been a nice place to meditate or a nice position to meditate. Yes, I would say that would be quite equivalent to meditation, yes. that that condition of mind-body where you're not having to compensate and to push or to pull would be a sign that you are in a meditative quality already. It would certainly be the start of something. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So one way of looking at what we're doing maybe is to have this quality of that 
maybe either beginning of the meditative process or a quality of meditative mind and body while you're doing any activity. Mm -hmm. So like a meditation inactivity could be one way of describing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move you forwards and stop. And stop. And let me move you further forwards. So you see that the, the, your condition isn't changing as you're coming backwards and forwards. Mm -hmm. It hasn't broken that mind-body stillness. Mm -hmm or the absence of pushing-pulling. Mm -hmm. So you have this mind-body quality of stillness, non-rushing non and non-pushing, and then stand up with the heels. And you've still got it in the standing, if that makes sense. It's, yes. it's there now, the same condition that you don't have to correct, push or pull something and compensate, and the impulses are going this way and this way don't seem to be manifest at the moment. Is it an easy place to be, or is it a bit of a challenge to be in this quality of stillness? Is it a, is uh, well, the, the quality of stillness is fine. The, I notice just a slight sort of tightness here. Yes. Um, where the, the hips are perhaps feel like they're unusually up, perhaps, or, yeah, because I think I have a tendency to tuck my tail underneath. Yes, yes. Um, so there could be some stretches and so different things going on there yeah. that might be part of an unraveling process or a reorganizing process. So the interesting thing about what we do is I don't choose how and what unravels, but get you to a point of quiet, non-doing non and non-reaction. And the whole system seems to want to rebalance and reorganize itself organically without me thinking, I need a bit more of this here and a bit more of this here and a bit more shoulders out like this. It's not what we do. But so it's very, very likely that some reorganization is going on but outside of my remit. Mm. Now take the hips back and bend the knees. And then heels. And then bend the knees. And stop. And there's no right position. There's no right way to sit. But you said something interesting that you normally might do something like tuck your tailbone underneath you mm -hmm. and for whatever reason you're not doing that in this still place and so there's going to be some reorganization of the whole muscle patterns around the hip and pelvic area okay i'm going to move you forwards again and then stop and then stand up with the heels that's fine and then bend the knees again yes and stop there wait and then heels, and then bend the knees again, heels, and then bend the knees again, and heels. Are you still staying with that still quality of, yes. And now you're gonna walk with it, walk around the room. Yes, walk to the sofa and then come back quite quickly. Yeah, and then come round again. Yeah, come back to the stool. Yeah, and stop there. And then again, hips back and bend the knees. And stop there, and then heels. Yes, bend the knees. And heels, that's it, yeah. Okay, let's have you on the table for a few minutes today. So we have your shoes off and we'll have you here. So you just jump on here and then get yourself in the middle of the table and come all the way back. That's it, okay. Any more books, one second. So I've got the weight of your head, mm -hmm. that's fine. So the same as the chair, really. I'm, I'm going to do all the, all the hard work. I'll be lifting you and moving you. Mm -hmm. And unless I say otherwise, there's nothing I'll require from you to do. Okay, so leave yourself just there doing nothing on the table and I'll lift up a leg.
Any observations or questions popping in while you're having a, an easiest time on the, on the table? Uh, yes, well, as someone who knows nothing about it, what, it, what is the philosophical underpinning of what you're doing? Yeah, the, the practice really comes before the philosophy, but the practice is to help you recover this state of stillness and ease without the jumpy, stressed part of the mind and body dominating. So all the habits that we'd normally have of what you call overcoming inertia, snatching, jumping, forcing, stressing, efforting all over the, all over the place when we sit, stand, move, and do uh, other activities, that can subside or be prevented and it lets or liberates another condition which you called stillness or ease mm -hmm. or smoothness. And um, whatever philosophy comes from that, I suppose, comes from that. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be that way around. It's not like there's a, the, the philosophy comes first and then we'll work it out. Mm -hmm. The experience comes first. And if you think this makes sense philosophically, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But I haven't got very much philosophy to, to preach, really. But from the practice, you could get a, a certain number of ideas that might make sense to you, that if you stop doing the old habits, the right thing happens by itself. Mm -hmm. If you leave yourself alone, without the usual habits of stress and reaction, you're more free. You, know, those are, you could call those philosophies if you want. Mm -hmm. You could say when the mind quietens down, the body opens up. Would that, would that make sense? I don't know what your experience is. When the mind, sorry, so when the mind quietens, quietens down, down the, body the body opens up. Or you could say another way, the mind and body are, are the same thing. So when there's a stillness of the mind, there's a stillness in the body. So if I said to you, when you talked about the jumpy thing that would normally th be there when you overcome inertia, is that a jumpiness of the mind or is that a jumpiness of the body? Not an easy question, is it? No. So I'll take your leg, don't help me. So it's the same thing now, moving your arm around and you're giving me full permission to move it wherever it wants to go. Mm -hmm. And you're just letting gravity work all the way through you on the mm -hmm. table.
Any other experiences or observations kicking in? Yeah, the, um, the position that you found for the back is um, about as nice as it's felt for a long time. Very, it's quite often um, not comfortable to lie like that for. But it is at the moment. Very, yeah, it's, it, it feels. Um, In, interesting, it has a similar quality to standing and sitting there, it's like a T shape. Yes, so a similar quality of the smoothness of the movement you have the lying down. The stillness. The stillness, yes. Um, but the T shape, uh, I don't know, I just experienced it. feels it. like a T shape, that's your imagination, yes. Yeah. Hmm, like, like this. Yeah. Hmm. And that feels nice. So in a way there's no break between sitting, standing and lying. It can all be the same condition mm -hmm. of ease. Or another way of putting it would be that you're being kind to yourself sitting, standing and lying down. Mm -hmm. There's no break. Yeah. There's a constancy of condition. Mm -hmm. And it's that constancy of condition, Alexander called it use of the self. How we look after ourselves moment by moment that is the purpose of Alexander Lessons. And it's that that we want to liberate and help you to navigate back to um, more and more on your own. Because as you say, it feels quite nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's not, it doesn't just feel nice, it's healthy. I don't know if you can see the connection between the two. But it's healthy for the system to be expansive and still and free. And when you say nice, I would also guess it means that the muscles feel in a softer and easier condition. Yes, there's less work being done. Less work being done, yeah. Yes, I think that's exactly right. The muscles are, 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 are they're not in conflict. Yeah. And then on the mind-body level, what condition is the mind in that enables the less work to be done in the body? Can you see that link? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a stillness of mind when one's body is... Comfortable. Correct. There's stillness in mind when the body is comfortable, there's a stillness of body when the mind is yeah, comfortable. And, yeah. 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 and Alexander called that psychophysical unity, that actually you can't really separate the, yeah. the components. Okay, I'm going to get you off the table in a second. I'm going to, you're going to roll and you're going to come over and then I'll swing you so you'll be sitting on the side of the table. But you're going to come over as a piece. So right now roll, shoulder, hip and leg over the side of the table. That's it. And then help yourself off with your hands. Yeah. That is your your first lesson. Thank you very much. Good. Thanks for for showing up. Any final observations or questions? Yeah. What do you do with it now? What do I do with it now? What would you like to do with it now? I don't know. Um, <laughs> 
I, mean, I suppose it begs the question of what how, how does yeah how does one come back to that right experience? how do you come back to those so you obviously or, or yeah. what is what is it that or on the negative side is like what is to be avoided that moves one away from that experience? ah okay so is this, is this great question yeah. yeah so obviously after you have an experience like this you'd like to keep it or at least come back to it mm. okay so that's your question how do i come back to it and how do i lose it less in other words now what do you do with it well it'll be nice to have this for the rest of your life every minute but it's not possible <laughs> so realistically what lessons offer is the ability to react less to life's demands and stresses so you lose it less and when you do lose it because life happens sometimes in a large way to be able to navigate back to this more and more effectively and that is a number of alexander sessions that develop the mind body state of stillness and non-reaction to life's events life's stimuli and that's a journey so yes you have something now and you'd like to keep it if i'm really honest with you i'll say you're not going to keep it it'll probably dissipate a little bit over the next few hours but you'll have a memory there'll be like a realization oh yeah but i know that that wasn't me at my best i can recover something that's this that it's not even one lesson there's a value in that because you have a, an experience of something which is easy and pleasurable and healthy and you want to find a way of navigating back to it more effectively and to lose it a little less okay and that's the that's the purpose of teaching so you're welcome to come again you're welcome to come to the school and uh, receive some work from the students when they're in training there are different options available good well thanks again for for coming it's useful for the students and uh, hopefully it was interesting and useful for you too yeah, absolutely thank you very much thank good. you for your okay. time and expertise thank you all right